So let's get to the news because I don't think you're going to get this perspective from anybody. Um, obviously, Fiorella in Moscow. I live there. I know a lot of things, kind of like with the Tucker Carlson interview, that Pasta, you'll know once you visit here, there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes, a lot of things happening that it's hard to understand unless you live there. I'm not talking about being a tourist there for like a week, two or three even. I'm talking about actually living there. So let's get started on this because from the get-go where this happened, uh, this happened at Crocus City Music Hall. Now, mm -hmm. some background really quick on that. Crocus City Music Hall is a huge venue where a lot of famous uh, singers and performers go, where a lot of people go. Now, I want to emphasize something. Crocus City Music Hall, and I'll show it later down the, the dock, it's actually pretty far from the center of Moscow. It is about with traffic, because you've got to take in traffic at least 40 minutes from Moscow uh, city center. So just so you understand, Moscow, the city is one thing. And outside of the city, you have Moscow uh, region or Moscow district, the entire district. It's called Oblast. And that is much bigger than Moscow city. And now within Moscow city, you have the city center, which is anywhere from Metro Smolenskaya or Kievskaya to all the way to, I guess, on the all the way east. And so it is, it is a huge city, but oftentimes it takes forever if you're driving by car because of the traffic. Now, when this happened, it happened yesterday night when these people were going to a concert and they were expecting to have a good night and it ended up in total chaos. This is... Now, uh, at least 143 people, according to Margarita Semignon, have died. They're still finding more people in the rubble. I'm hearing numbers of 150 now, and that is likely to go up. So what actually happened, right? So these guys walked in through the, the front of the theater, the sides, and started shooting at people, literally just shooting at people. It turns out they were four Tajiki uh, Muslim men that were hired. So the whole ISIS claim that we're going to talk about and break down here came from the United States. Uh, first of all, it came from the Western media. Russia never once said, oh, this is a uh, ISIS attack. Russia called it a terrorist attack. Initially, Western media was describing it as a mass shooting because they could easily say, oh, look, Russia also has mass shootings, even though we have these mass shootings every day in the United States. And this has never happened in Moscow in like, I, this is the deadliest attack Moscow and Russia yeah, has ever Can I say something, Fee, real quick? On CNN the other day, right when this was happening, and first of all, let me just say that they're showing maybe this stuff about 10% of the time on mainstream media uh, when it comes to the Moscow attack. But there was a lady who came on that was supposedly an expert on foreign affairs. She was saying, Remember, there's more police brutality in Russia and China than there is in the United States and any other country and whatnot. I mean, the flat out lies, not just the fact that, fam, that all they're talking about, that Catherine, of princess of Wales, has cancer, right? Like, they're talking about that. Screw everybody else out there in America who can't have health care, who can't even get a checkup. But we're going to sit there and talk about a royal's health issue and, and, and just consume the airways with it. But this lady, when she was talking about the situation, she really had the gall or the stones. And this is how stupid people are and how uninformed they are and how, it, how it's so important to listen to Fiorella because she lives there and works there when she tells you this stuff to sit there with a straight face. We know when you look at the statistics, more than anything, the United States jails its citizens higher percentage than any fucking country on the planet by far. So to sit there with a straight face and act like, Oh, these people are getting jailed. You know, so many people I heard out here, or I heard they're jailing people in Russia and they're jailing citizens and, and journalists. It's the lies, the propaganda. It's just nauseating at this point. So when you hear these mainstream media and mouth talking pieces sit there and act like there's more people in Russia going to jail than anywhere else, don't listen to it. It's a bunch of, it's, it's a pack of lies, as Mr. Galloway would say. Go ahead. Uh, so let's go to the next one, uh, Jamie, because actually this information um, I'll update because it's a little bit out of 
out of uh, sync now. Okay, so uh, again, the Russian Investigative Committee had said earlier 115. I, it's been moved to 143. Um, so this is what I want to give some background that you're not going to get unless you live there. So Tajiki immigrants, and I've talked about this before in other streams, Tajiki immigrants are working class people. They come from Tajikistan. They are Muslim people. So they they usually overwhelmingly Muslim, uh, Muslim people. They work at uh like snow plowing they do like you know the, the hardcore work like any immigrant does a lot of them are becoming taxi drivers that sort of thing so is there some sort of fomenting like anti-tajiki sentiment and with some people yes a lot of the alexei navalny uh kind of support came from that like from the ultra nationalists you have like the 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 people who are you know super religious and ultra nationalist, and then you have like the Navalny people who are also ultra nationalist and called all Muslim Muslims cockroaches. So there is some of that sentiment. It's not prevailing like you see it in the United States, though, and that's the difference that we're going to talk about here. It's a completely different country, so you can't use the same tactics. But there, that exists. So to me, I'm looking at this. Okay, you have these Tajiki men that are these immigrants that just arrived somehow they all get paid at least the one that margarita interviewed and we're going to watch that in a minute she interviewed one of the assailants who said he was paid the equivalent of five thousand four hundred dollars like half a million rubles uh to kill all these people and he was called by somebody named muhammad i think he said on the phone call so this is why this situation already stinks because first of all it, the whole the whole thing was reportedly conducted on Telegram, and it was planned a month ago. Okay, so it was planned a month ago. These people were hired, you know, pay for hire, and they didn't. They don't even speak Russian. They speak very bad Russian. They just got here. So why would these people be the ones that are targeted? Well, if I am some sort of intelligence uh, official, or if I am trying to sow some sort of divide in the Russian people between Russians and, you know, immigrants and people who are Muslim uh, to foment a bigger divide than there already is, I'm going to use the people that are always called terrorists to do a terrorist attack. So the fact that they were Tajiki is really suspect to me because I would choose them if I was trying to do exactly that. So that's number one. Number two, um, the only people that benefit from this are the West, right, so far. And that's just my like analysis, not even going into the evidence that we have yet. But just so you know, the Tajiki people, that specific group of people that they picked is extremely suspect because that will push an anti-Muslim uh, sentiment in some people. Not overwhelmingly so like we saw in the U.S., but remember, pre-9-11, that's exactly what we saw there to get us into war with Iraq and Afghanistan. Fam, um, again, I wanna start off by saying this too, nothing has been confirmed. The only thing that's been confirmed is that people have died, that uh, Russian civilians who have nothing to do with anything have died, that this is a terrorist attack because of the way it was planned and conducted, and that these terrorists tried to escape to Ukraine. And Putin did confirm this, and we're going to watch him confirm this. He confirmed that they were trying to cross the border into Ukraine and had contacts in Ukraine. So that has been confirmed. But there are a lot of analysis out there, a lot of things being thrown out. This is being so sensationalized. And we just have to not forget that these people died and that they're innocent and that they were there were children among this. And of course, with everything going on in the world, in Gaza, and pal and in uh, the West Bank and all of the Palestinian people, we know that this is terrible. What's happening? But this is an escalation that I think we will see the consequences show, like from what how Putin and others have reacted. Fam, go ahead. No, no, I just said I, I, I was just gonna say ditto. Yeah, everything that's going on, it's crazy right now. I know nothing is confirmed, but there's a lot of people who understand what's going on. It really isn't that that hard to put the pieces together, right? You, you know, yeah. well, here's what was going to go on, ladies and gentlemen. I at first did not get credentials to go to observe the election in Russia. Last minute second, there was a delegation that was saying, hey, we got you through. You can go. You show up at an embassy, uh, either New York, Houston, D.C., 
uh, and bring them this letter and we'll get you your visa. Well, a day before that was going to happen, they said they were stopping all visas. Why? Because it was announced, you know, by the United States uh, Embassy in Moscow to stay away from large crowds, to stay away uh, from all these other things, right? So with that being going on, they immediately shut down any more visas to go out there. So I wasn't able to go to observe the elections. And, you know, I was going to go to a, uh, an undisclosed location. Don't want to say that uh, because it still might happen down the road. But now they're even deeming more frightening out. But for me, a person who always makes these analogies and kind of compares it to when I play poker, somebody has a tell. They tip their hat. Uh, you know, and we're going to show that. And I think a lot of people are still trying to figure out, OK, who really did this? Who's involved? But how dangerous this could be that the United States is playing this game here. And if they do have any strings attached, I mean, I think it's going to it's going to take the United States citizens to really get informed, to understand what's going on and to stand up against their government because they're putting us all in danger. Nonetheless, so many people are in danger from United States bombs around the world, right? We have that situation going on right now. It's it's American bombs that are being dropped in Gaza, in Gaza, I, I, American bombs that are being dropped in parts of Russia and in parts of the Ukraine. You know, how long can we go this? And people are still just living in the clouds, right? They're consumed with breads and circuses. But fam, I'm just going to say this right now. And I can tell you from when I talk to people on a regular basis out here, that read the newspaper, who are a little bit more informed than what's going on, even though the newspaper is just a, prop, a bunch of propaganda, they have their heads and the clown. And they, being the deep state, the oligarchs, whoever is pulling the strings from the Western perspective, they're playing with fire. And it's our lives that are going to be on the line. So we can't be comfortable anymore. we got to start being vocal about this, ladies and gentlemen. Even if you're a beginner and you're in the minor leagues and you're really not deep into politics, what's going on is very very dangerous. Go ahead, fam. Um, no, I 100%. And this is an escalation. I think that's what people need to remember. Obviously, these were human beings that lost their lives. But uh, I, I, sus I, I can't confirm. But yeah. I highly, highly uh, suspect that, uh, according to now the Russian government and pretty much everybody in the military from the Chech Chechens, by the way, who are Muslim, the entire Akhmat region actually participated in helping apprehend these individuals to show that they are, they're not condoning this terrorism, that they have nothing to do, that Muslim people have nothing to do with this. And by the way, they're saying they're already that it, it was Ukraine. So they're already pointing the finger at Ukraine a hundred percent. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. I really quickly, Jamie, if you can just pull up the map so people can get an understanding of this region and how big Moscow is. It's it's in circles, right? So basically I live here in the smallest yellow circle center. That's where I live, pretty much there. Uh, the uh, Crocus City Hall is here. Now Crocus, it's, it's where the music sign is, okay? So it's gonna take you a while to get there. Even if you take the train, it'll take you at least 30 minutes to get there or so. Uh, so what were the people in the cent center of Moscow in danger necessarily not from direct uh, attacks from those people, but that the reason that the mayor of Moscow shut every event down in that neighboring cities, including in St. Petersburg and in other parts, shut everything down is because when sometimes the uh, terrorist attacks happen, they happen in different locations. And that's happened before where you have a terrorist attack in one city, then you have it at another venue. So for security concerns, they started shutting everything down. And in fact, uh, Crocus is the brand name uh, of of this uh, music hall, but it is actually a name that's used for other things, including several gyms. And I attend one of these gyms. It's it's a Crocus uh, gym, and that the gyms were also closed as well because they're not sure if they're targeting those specific ones right now. They're just investigating, and this is an ongoing investigation. Okay, so that's just what's going on. I wanted everybody to get a sense of where it was and why they decided to basically shut down everything. Uh, now, so the aftermath, just so you get a, a, a glimpse of the aftermath, because I'm sure everybody saw the ambulance pictures. I'm sure everybody saw all of that, but this is the aftermath of, of what it was. Everything went to shreds. Everything was burned. All the, um, the, the roof was collapsing upon itself. Uh, and it's, it's basically just charred. Everything was charred. And it seems like they there was a fire started on purpose as well 
from the outside. That was what was being reported. Can you pull that up, Jamie? Um, and and again, like this is this is obviously sad because these people were going to a concert and usually when it happens like that, you're trying to attack the civilian population and get a rise out of, out of the people. And there have been so many memorials put up everywhere all over Moscow. There's been people just going out there and giving their condolences in other parts of the world, like China, even all over Serbia, all over, you know, so many places, people have been India and even non-friendly governments have sent their, sent their condolences to the people. And, um, so that's that's what's been happening, and I, it's okay. We can put it up later. I can add the pictures later. But so Margarita, Margarita Simonyan, editor in chief of RT, actually interviewed one of the assailants, and in her in the interview, he divulged a lot of information. So let's go ahead and and watch some of this. I don't know, fam, if you heard of the ear cutting off well we can mention that later yeah no i, uh, I saw it i mean a, a lot of people are portraying it that russians are doing it to the ukrainians right um i mean i've never heard of that but this is this is a, this is, is like the disinformation the real disinformation that's going on right those those who are talking about misinformation or disinformation are the ones who are giving it right that they're, they're throwing out the propaganda yeah. out there so yes fam go ahead Okay. Yeah. And well, yeah, I mean, this is, again, this is an escalation because you're attacking civilians. So Russian civilians during this entire two year conflict with Ukraine have never been attacked. It's been drones. It's been things like that. And Russia has always uh, contained it in terms of, uh, in terms of a small terrorist attacks, like targeting individuals. We had Daria Dugana, right. Who was targeted. We had a few Russian bloggers, who were targeted. They were all heavily political. Uh, they had gone to the front. They had gone to Donbass. It's I, it's terrible what happened to them. But there has never been an assault like this directly on non-political civilians that are just like going to a concert. So for them, this is now a whole other ball game. And I think you're going to see the less um, the restraint you've seen from Putin for a long time. I think that's going to come off with this. Can I, can I say uh, I don't think people realize. Question, fam? Yeah. So look, I, it doesn't take a genius to understand what's going on here what not. And I think the Russian intelligence probably knows a lot more than what we're talking about right now. And it's very easy for us to put this together to say right and right the prime the, uh, sus the the main suspects or the prime suspects are definitely the Ukrainians obviously and anything the Ukrainians do. Uh, it's just like Garland Nixon said they're a proxy of the United States. They 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 lost their sovereignty in 2014 completely. You they don't Victoria, walk without the U.S. telling them. Yeah, like absolutely. literally. Victoria Noodleman, before she resigned, when she went there to take care of the whole Zeluzny Zelensky issue, when Zelensky got rid of Zeluzny and she went there to kind of christen what Zelensky was saying, she even said, uh, and we're going to show that, she even said there's going to be some surprises. Um, very easy to see that the prime suspects are the Ukrainians. Now, right off the bat, like the very next day, Russia with some cruise missiles hit some, you know, some energy outlets in Ukraine to say, OK, now you, you done made the bear mad again. And this time the bear is going to spank hard. Does that have anything to do with, with the attack that's going on? Those cruise missiles that hit those energy sources in Ukraine? Have you heard anything from your sources that it was in response to what happened at Krakow City Hall? No, uh, no, like nothing is confirmed, but Russia usually does that. But they yeah. won't attack civilians usually uh, still, right? Like they're not going to go and bomb, bomb like a, a crocus or some sort of concert venue at, in Kiev. You know, that's not that's that's what the West would want. But you're not going to see that. But you're going to see them really respond. They can still and spin this right, fam. Can't the West still course. spin this? Isn't this what the West wants? It almost seems like the United States has no care about the Ukrainians. Over a half a million dead. The average almost. soldier on the front line is 43 years old. A whole younger generation has been wiped out. Lindsey Graham, best money ever spent. Like, they don't give a shit about the Ukrainian lives. And that's the sad part here. The United States intelligence apparatus or the ruling class, whoever's pulling the strings, does not care about human life in, in Ukraine. They don't care how many Ukrainians die for their cause. Can't they spin yeah. these these counterattacks, these responses to what happened in Krakow Krak City Hall? In other words, I think that the United States was counting on the Russian Federation on striking back. Can't they spin this in a certain way? That I mean, they can't, but they do anyway, right? Yeah. So Russia's going to do what 
what they need to do. Um, again, and I, I, while this is happening, while there was this attack, Russia, what did Russia do? They had conquered Abdiivka. Putin gave a recently an interview to Tucker Carlson that highlighted him as an intelligent individual that makes a lot of sense to a lot of Americans. Putin won with 87% plus of the vote in all of Russia, over 94% in some territories of the new territories that got to vote. He won with flying colors. And, and again, this is an increase from six years ago. And he is looking to the uh, east. The entirety of Russia has said, we don't need the West anymore. They're, they're done with them. And not just the, the Russians, but now the Chinese, like the Chinese have been doing great business with Russia. You're seeing more Chinese cars in Russia. You're seeing Russians sell American and European cars and trade them for the Chinese cars because they're cheaper for Russians because it's so expensive to get like a Toyota here. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. It's so expensive to get like a Toyota RAV4 is like 40,000 or more dollars for a Toyota RAV4 for a simple basic car. Why would they pay that when they can get like a nice luxury looking uh, car that's Chinese and that works better? So there's, there's a lot of that happening uh, like on the background, right? We're seeing the shift towards a new paradigm and, um, you know, Andre Martianov talked about this in the interview. He said, the West is done. The United States is done. They're done. Like there's, there's, they're done. And, and I agree with him on that. You're seeing the decline, you're seeing the, the decline and it's slower and it's not something we're glad to see, but it is something that is happening. And I think that this is an attempt to really uh, attack Russia and destroy it at all costs, even if from the inside, because what they want Russians to do is to keep uh is start blaming each other to be disunited to start going against you know immigrants going against muslims to start blaming somebody else and that's what it seems to me this whole isis thing is about they want to get russians riled up to commit something like you said something uh terrible but again this is the russia is not the united states so we have to uh look at that and and it, and you know th there's so much so much going on and by the way, fam, when you you couldn't come here, there were several festivals that were happening. One of them was the youth festival, mostly Africans at this festival, people from Africa, Palestinians going there, showing solidarity with the Palestinian movement. We're talking about global South coming and saying, thank you, Putin. Thank you, Russia, for leading the way against the hegemonic West. That is that is what the West is angry about. You're, you're seeing that hole. And this is what we're talking about is like a wounded animal of sorts trying to do whatever they can. And that's what I see. But again, I want to go back to some of the facts, because again, that's all we have right now, right? So we have uh, this video from Margarita, let's go ahead and watch it. And then we'll talk about it. When did you arrive from Turkey? What did you do in Turkey? My documents expired, so I crossed the border. Once again, your full name. Uh, year of birth, 1998. What did you do in Krakos yesterday? What did you do in Krakus? I was shooting. You were shooting? You were shooting who? Why? For money. Money? Let's put him up. For how much money? Some 500,000. 500,000 of what? Of rubles. Did you get it from who? I have received only one half. It was transferred to my card. Where's your card? We gave it and it was in my 
clothes and my jacket, so I lost it. Where did you get weapons? They gave it to us. Who they? I don't know who they. They texted me on Telegram without names, without anything. How did they find you? You found them or they found you? They texted me. Why did they text you in particular? I don't know. I was listening to... But how come they just offer you to kill people out of thin air? It doesn't happen like this. What was on Telegram? I was listening to a prophet, to a sermon. You were listening to sermons, and uh, who texted you? Assistant of a preacher. What's his name? No name, no last name, no nothing. They just texted me. When did they text you? A month ago, who texted you exactly? He texted me, he promised me one million rubles. What did he promise you? What, he, what did he want from you? He offered me and I agreed. What did he offer? He offered money. For what? Money for what? He offered me to do these deeds for money. What deeds exactly? To kill people. To kill who? He just sent me the location. Did they tell you who to kill? People. What people? Doesn't matter. Anyone you meet there, anyone you encounter, just enter the location and kill people? Yes. Once again, your full name and your... Year of birth. Born in 1998. September 17th. So it's 25 year old, by the way, 25 year old. Uh, so I just want to clarify. So this video is what she, Margarita was uh, had posted first. She got a hold of this video from the Russian Special Forces and. Uh, talked about it uh first where, where, did, um, where did they grab him fam was it really close to the border uh, he was trying to get back into ukraine from what i understand so there was there was a, a whole heap of them trying to get back to ukraine they have already detained at least 11 people even though there's only four that were seen doing that so they've detained 11 assailants or 11 four there were four assailants they detained 11 people suspected of being involved. That's what they've said. So, and they stopped the people that were about to cross the border into Ukraine. They didn't get too far. And we're going to bring that up. I think, I think I put it in here. Maybe I didn't. Um, I think it was, hold on. I think it was at the bottom of, yeah. So they, uh, they stopped them from, in like Chakun, they were about 150 kilometers from uh, Ukraine. So they stopped them there, 100, 100 kilometers to the Ukraine port border. Uh, so, yeah. Ladies by the way, I just wanted to say really quickly, not to cut you off, guys, there, Fiorella, we put the link to her YouTube in the chat. Please go and subscribe to that YouTube right now. You're not going to get this information in a lot of other places right there. We know they're trying to suppress this information. you got to get a perspective from somebody who actually knows the boots on the ground. We've always been boots on the ground. But this is really important right now. Go ahead, Fee. Uh, yeah, so, Jamie, if you go back, if you can go back to the second link under what happened and scroll down, that's where the, uh, the picture of that is, of how far they were from the Ukrainian border. Um, and I'm just going to, if you can show that picture, I'll just... Uh, talk a little bit more about this. I forgot to mention this. So uh, um, the weapons that th they used were actually published in advance. Um, they were prepared in advance, excuse me. And after the attack, they uh, the FSB confirmed that they were attempting to cross the border into Ukraine and they detained them in the actual Bryansk region, which is close to Ukraine. And so they are already being, they're probably now in Moscow. Earlier they were being transferred to Moscow. Um, and like I said before, uh, the Akhmat regiment, which is the Chechen ones, and I visited the Akhmat, one of the Akhmat uh, posts in uh, several Donetsk near that area of Donbass. And they, you know, they're very nice. They fed us. They gave us some some food, some soup that they ate. But they were training hardcore and um, they mean business. 
they've been helping get these guys and and go go to go after them. So they're they mean business. There's us earlier there were 120 victims in the hospital. That might be increased by now. Um this is something I want to point out before we move any further, and there's more of this. So the government of Moscow, right, the authorities in Moscow are going to pay compensation to the victims of the families of the dead in the amount of 500,000 to 3 million rubles. So that's between like, that's between like, uh, I would say like five, between, so yeah, a million rubles is like 10,000. So it's between like $5,000 and $32,000 that the government is giving to the victims. By the way, the government is also going to give monthly payments to the uh, ch the children of victims who were affected. The government is going to pay their debts. The Bank of Russia is going to get rid of all the debts of the uh, victims. So they're doing a lot to help them out. I don't know if we would ever see that happen in the States. I, for one, haven't seen that really happen. People usually have to get a GoFundMe, if you guys yeah. recall. Yeah. To, to get a gives and go. A gives and go. Hey, you're dead, but your family can't afford to bury you. So mm. can but you please fam, have... <laughs> Catherine of Wales, she, the princess, has cancer. So we're going to spend all the time on the video in the, in the new mainstream media news talking about poor Catherine. Yeah, you know what we should talk about is why the hell so many people are getting cancer and in the US and in the UK. It's really strange. Well, GMOs anyway. are banned in your country, <laughs> so you're lucky. We Everything we put in our mouth has got some crap in it. And right now they're even talking about... The country I reside in. It's not my country yet. I'm not a Russian citizen yet. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Look at uh, the United see. States is still my yeah. country. Air what? Quotes. Uh, so Putin, Putin, Putin Vladimir, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin, uh, you know, Putin's name is, uh, Vladimir Putin, Vladimirovich. Anyway, uh, so, cause they have like three names. Um, so he made a whole statement after this happened, right? So he did this whole statement and he looked very upset. Like he looked pretty angry and he said that, these people are going to pay. The people who did this are going to pay. So uh, I'll let you all listen to it because he, this is from RT, it was dubbed in English. So um, yeah, just hear Putin and, and watch how he is delivering this news. We will be investigating this terrorist attack and we already have some results. All the four perpetrators were directly involved who were gunning people down killing people. They were found and apprehended. They tried to escape. They were moving towards the border with Ukraine. And we have data that suggests that they were uh, about to be moved towards the territory of Ukraine by those in Ukraine. Our military services, our emergency services, everyone is, our investigators are working on finding out the orchestrators of this terrorist attack, those who gave them transportation, who uh, created, uh, who gave them weapons, etc. We will be investigating this terrorist attack and we already have some results. All the four perpetrators were directly involved who were gunning people down, killing people. They were found and apprehended. They tried to escape, they were moving towards the border with Ukraine, and we have data that suggests okay. that they were. So, uh, if Putin is saying that they were going to move, that they were trying to get across the border to Ukraine, if the FSB is saying that, that automatically means Ukraine's involved. Why would these people? I mean, for me, because why would these people uh, go to Ukraine unless they have? contacts. And that's what he said. He said they have other people there that they could rely on. Now, that doesn't mean that it's everybody in Ukraine. That doesn't mean it could be, you know, different entities in Ukraine that we don't know. But we do know that somebody in Ukraine knew about it. Right. And this is where we're going to get into the who done it part, the ISIS part. Like, OK, so you have the Ukrainian connection. You have 
behind Ukraine, it's obvious that we said it before, they don't move, they don't walk, they don't eat, they don't go to the toilet without the United States saying it's okay to do so. Ukraine is not managed by Zelensky. Ukraine is managed by the United States and NATO. That's what Ukraine has become. That's what it's been since 2014 and Victoria Newland's cookies. So that yeah. that's the reality. So we we can't we can't just say Ukraine in isolation. Who's behind Ukraine? Who funds Ukraine? Who is funding all of this? Who who is threatening Russia with boots on the ground from NATO? It's France. And of course, France, the United States, the entire West headline, CNN, ISIS. It was ISIS, says the United States. ISIS was involved. So th that came not from Russia. That came from the United States. Why? Well, because some some there was some sort of fake that came out that said, oh, ISIS claims responsibility for the attack in the busy Moscow area. So this is from CNN, right? And um, so there was some sort of, of claim that they latched on to, and they were all spreading this argument. And Macron came out and said, oh, I believe it was ISIS. It was ISIS. So now they're all in agreement that it was ISIS. Fam, I don't know about if you know this, but when what does usually happen when all of the mainstream media and all the politicians are saying that it was ISIS who did X, Y, Z. Is it usually ISIS fam? Usually it is not. <laughs> Sometimes it is. I mean, it's just, they're just getting their marching orders and their information from someone else. It's the fact is that they've never, ever been able, they've never had to show their homework. They've gotten away with murder from yeah. God knows how long. The fact that, uh, you know, Rachel Maddow for all this bullshit, mm -hmm. if Vladimir Putin was to shut down the energy grid and whatnot, you know, so you got the Dems on the left hand side of mainstream media talking Russia, Russia, Russia. You got the conservatives on the right hand side. Like I have a friend that literally says that China controls our energy grid. I mean, just ridiculous shit all the time. <laughs> I mean, no, he's a good friend of mine. I love him. But I mean, just ridiculous shit all the time. But usually the fact is that they become such propaganda outlets now. They're completely controlled by the mainstream media. The media, mainstream media is completely controlled by the ruling class, uh, the intelligence apparatus to see. I patch McCain, Dan Crenshaw, when he gets questioned about the fact that they're, they want to have, you know, a TikTok ban and want to act like our intelligence apparatus doesn't control what's going on. I mean, it, it's laughable at this time, but they've never had to show their homework. They've never had to been held accountable. And we have these huge problems, fam, because it just continues to get worse here in the United States. They continue to do what they, they're doing. I don't know. I mean, we've questioned this before, Jamie, right, on a show where we've said um, – how much is this if this is working, right? Well, with, with Jeremy Kuzmarov on one of our LOL, the left on left segments, is it working? The fact that they just continue to repeat the same propaganda about Russiagate, right? Even though they haven't had any evidence. And in fact, a lot of their evidence has been debunked because uh, it's not evidence, it's propaganda. Why do they continue to do this? Does it really work? Who is it being effective on, you know? But there was a poll taken, and I think this is, uh, has a lot to do with TDS. The fact that half the Democratic Party or those who are registered as, uh, as Democrats are anti-Russia means that it is working in some effect or they're just completely lying. I would hope that the majority of people out there would understand that the government doesn't care about you. They're just putting out nothing but propaganda. Gerald Salente on one of our shows, it says it doesn't make a difference what will happen next. Anytime we get into a situation where the ruling class or the government gets in trouble, they just bring us to war. And people get so fixated on that, right? And I see so many people who are fixated right now, the conservatives at the border, people who are fixated with China, 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 you know, the Chinese spy balloon. So, you know, when you hear this propaganda going out there, ISIS, 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 some people will believe it, fam, because they're so misinformed, really. They just lack the basic knowledge of what's going on. They can't find these countries on a map, let alone understand the parts that are in play. And if it is ISIS, ISIS is funded and you know, lifted up by who? The United States. They're a division of exactly. the Medellin. I mean, it's still the same thing. At the end of the day, all roads lead yeah. back to Rome. Rome, <laughs> the ruling class, yeah. the middle class, uh, the ruling class, the elites, the oligarchy. And uh, it, it really is, it's scary, scary times right now, fam, because it, it seems like they yeah. just want to get us into a war. It, it, it almost seems like they're making these moves, hoping that Russia steps and does what they, what you know, responds appropriately to the way Russia feels. I mean, I, I could, I, when you, you, you know, you have to tell me, take a week or two, how are the people feeling in Russia? Cause I know a lot of people in Russia, this, the, the kind of the feeling was 
when it came to the Donbass that Putin and the Russian Federation were dragging their feet. I'm going to assume they want some, some type of response now going, enough is enough. You're going to fund these crazy Ukrainian Nazis or these radicals or whatever they are. It's your money, your weapon, your training, you, the United States. At one sometime, it was like, enough is enough now. We, we're not even safe in Moscow. They're going to want some type right. of. That's, yeah. yeah. That's what the West wants. They wanted to scare people. Oh, you're vulnerable in Moscow. This is now showing that, you know, there is a vulnerability there. And that's that's what they want. But as Putin said in his entire statement that he gave, he said this is going to unite Russia more. And that's all that, that it's done. Everything that's gone after Russia, whether it's been the sanctions, whether it's been the attacks on the elections, whatever it's been, actually made people go out to vote more. It made people to say, OK, well, we're going to support, you know, our president, even if we don't agree with everything. That That's what it is. You have different factions, different parties in Russia, but still they all united on the Ukraine uh, war. They united in supporting the special military operation. So there, th that you had a very small, you know, Navalny-esque a group that said no, blah, blah, blah. But it was a very, very minute group of a lot of ignorant people that really don't know anything. But it's, it, again, like, I think this is going to backfire. I think this is actually going to make people in, in Russia really more united and understanding as to what happened. So um, regarding well, the ISIS thing, though. Some type of response, fam? I mean, you know. They, uh, I mean, I think you, I think people definitely want a response, especially right now when things are, like hot and people are angry and upset. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that, uh, that Russia is going to do something that's going to be, um, I think, you know, like kill a bunch of Ukrainian civilians. I don't think you're going to see that. That's not how Russia is. I think you're going to see less restraint. Like you're seeing with the ear cutting off and Putin saying that they're pardoned, that his soldiers are pardoned by from cut, like from any trouble for cutting, cutting this guy's ear off because that happened. And so you you don't you haven't seen that we haven't seen that happen like before. So you're gonna see more aggressiveness, but you're not gonna they're not gonna do something that's gonna jeopardize all of Russia for a reaction. It's they're they're not Americans, they're not gonna just react and, and stuff. You're gonna see less restraint for sure. You're gonna see more precautions. Now there's gonna be more security everywhere. This is what what ends up happening, right? There's gonna be like there's already security guards when you go shopping. When you go anywhere, there's already like security guards. Now we're going to see it a lot more and that's going to be more intense and unfortunate for everybody else, by the way. Uh, I want to say on the ISIS comment, though, I have a very, I really do not think this was ISIS. First of all, ISIS, um, these, these guys from the looks of them were very young, very um, inexperienced. They were not really saying the ma mantra of martyrdom, which is what these uh these radicals often talk about they come in and they 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 wear suicide vests they come in they do conduct things differently they don't just shoot they have more of a different tactic and i just don't see how this is similar to other isis attacks we have seen in the past these people were not well trained to shoot by the way they they were also, um, I mean, they could shoot. They knew how to use a gun, but they weren't good at it. They weren't actual, like, fully trained assassins from, if you look at the videos of where they were uh, shooting at people. I forgot to post some of these videos. There's one video where these people are, at the beginning, they're getting shot at. And you can see how they miss a lot of the, the shots, if you look at the video. They just don't seem capable of being formally trained and preparing and conducting this to the extent that ISIS has done. So that to me also is a negative against the whole ISIS theory. Like I said, we don't know for sure, but I just don't, I'm not buying it. Now, this is another thing that I thought was a good point, fam. Barack Obama. Okay. So Barack Obama. Can you please say his middle name? Jeez. Why, why do I need to say Barack Hussein Barack Obama? Barack Hussein Obama. Thank you. So Barack Hussein Obama, and this is posted by Vanessa Bealey, he uh, exits 10 Downing Street. So Obama, who armed and provided air cover for ISIS in Syria and Iraq, this impromptu visit to the UK, the intelligence behind Al-Qaeda and affiliates in Syria and Iraq was less than a week before the alleged ISIS attack in Moscow. So Obama 
was visiting <laughs> UK intelligence, right? And this less than a week before this attack. And again, we know Obama, what he did in the Middle East. And right now, who's helping fight the uh, Syrians? Who's helping fight um, the Al Qaeda terrorists and the the you know the moderate rebels, as we called them ah. in Syria? Who's helping? Who's doing that? By the way, oh, it's the Russians. The Russians have been helping the Syrian uh, army to fight these actual terrorist groups, and Russia has been saying that yeah, we want to help fight terrorism. We don't want this. Blah blah blah. It's very interesting to me that somehow, um, you know, ISIS is attacking Russia. So you could take that two ways. You could take that and say, oh yeah, and you know, it could be ISIS because. Uh, you know, Russia is helping Syria fight these terrorists, but it, it just, it, it, there's really not much to support that because why would they go after, after Russia really, unless they were pushed by the U S and as pasta said, all roads lead to Rome. Then at that point, it's not even ISIS. This is the intelligence apparatus of the U UK, the U S and who knows, perhaps Mossad. We don't know because they work in tandem. Look, I don't know if you guys the, recall. Look these, fam, look at these comments too as well. I, I don't know if this person's being sarc sarcastic or this is what's out there. Like these, these naf what do you call those? Nafto trolls or whatever you call those idiots or whatnot. Jason, I don't know if you're being serious or if you're being sarcastic, but. No, I think he's being serious. Really? Yeah. Laughable. Laughable. Yeah. We got, we got some, some Nafo in the chat. Chat, well, destroy welcome. the you know, you know We're free speech absolutist, so please come on and join your sorry ass <laughs> to the show. We love you. We thank you. If you want to help donate to the show, you got all the links down below. Please go ahead and help independent media get the truth out there. Fam, please continue. Mr. Ob uh, Barack Hussein Obama, by the way. So, uh, again, as you said, fam, all roads lead to Rome. So even if, even if you can say it was ISIS, who funded, who created, yeah. who radicalized uh, ISIS, it was the U.S., do these guys look like ISIS? No, they don't. They do not look anywhere near the, the capacity of well, ISIS. Well, you had a full beard, fam. It's when you beard. see... Well, maybe I should... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Down. Is mine getting too thick? When you talk... Sorry. Well, yeah, but when you talk to people like, you know, uh, Vanessa and, and even Kavork, and you, you see, you know, they, they it's, it's, Vanessa lives in Syria. Like, I mean, she... They they know what ISIS looks like, right? They they know what what these these people look like. They know what they act. They, these guys don't look like that. Of course, we can't make any confirmations, but I'm not really uh, jumping on that wagon, especially if it's being pushed by the U.S. to obfuscate. Bam, your word. The the reality of what's uh what's happening. So, fam, uh, fam and as while we're on the subject, right? So Israel says mm -hmm. they're going after uh, Israel didn't say it per se. There was one particular person yeah. who said that. Yeah. It was an RT yeah. interview, right? And he was very, yeah. very can upset. I, can I say something Go about ahead. this? I'm yeah. a little bit I'm a little bit annoyed with telegram channels and people in general making like huge leaps. Obviously, the Zionists like are everywhere, right? You can't you but that's not even like some guy that my uh my colleague Rory interviewed said that they want to attack uh, Israel wants to come after Russia. Israel wants to come after everybody that opposes them. You can't say that just because of that, that means that Israel was involved. You, just because of that incident. It's just very irresponsible to make those claims. It's sensationalist. But what we can say is if the UK intelligence was involved, if the US intelligence was involved, there is a chance that Mossad could be involved as well. Why would it benefit Israel? Well, okay, here's the thing. Uh, ISIS is obviously uh, tied to Muslims, even though Muslims are fighting them right now in Syria and in Iraq and in other parts of, of West Asia. So what Israel could benefit is to foment that anti-Muslim uh, sentiment because Israel right now is really just in the gutter with public perception. A lot of people are not, they're never going to recuperate with their image. They're just not, it's in the toilet. So could that benefit? Yeah. But again, I just, Israel and, and Russia still have a relationship. And this is something I've talked about before. They still have a relationship. I, 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 that's more of a reach 
I think this is more more looks like UK intelligence and or US intelligence. But again, I can't say that, you know, but so, well, our good friend Ian from another worldview of possible human said running to the border of Ukraine, ISIS. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I love you. Yeah. Ian. I'm glad you're there. Uh, my boy, yeah. when not, uh, we, we have so many. There's so much great stuff going on in our chat right now where people are kind of just picking through this and dissecting and trying to figure out what's going on. There's somebody who even said that doesn't make a difference. ISIS are just U.S. mercenaries, just like every organized yeah. crime group that, yeah. uh, that casually creates the, uh, these scenes when it is convenient for the U.S. and NATO interest. And, and this is something to point out. At the end of the day, who funds all this terrorism around the world? It's the United States apparatus. You know, and, and that's why I'm saying we have, to, we have to be able to speak up and, and, and let our voices be heard loud and clear. Enough is enough. We're playing with fire. You know what I'm saying? Not alone if you just, you know, if, if you lack the sympathy to understand that what we're doing right now, when you see people like Lindsey Graham openly and all these other people openly stand by the proxy Ukraine that has been, has no sovereignty. They're not their own sovereign state anymore. They're controlled by us. And all these people that are dying because of us, the situation when you listen to Vanessa Bealey, what's still going on in Syria, what's going on in Libya, it's a shame. But even more down the road, even more elevated above that, how long until the chickens come home to roost, ladies and gentlemen? They don't care about us at home. Don't think that they care about us at home. They don't care about people abroad. They don't care about people at home. That is something a lot of people got from COVID at the end of the day, right? When we were in a certain spot, fam, when somebody says, well, is this a, is this a plan, you know, a, a bioweapon used to kill people of color? I'm like, no. This is showing the ruling class for what they are. They don't give about us either, right? They don't give a damn about they. They think we're all useless eaters at the end of the day the ruling class cares about them the ruling class they don't care about anybody else do they give us privileges to make sure there's more divisiveness between us the people so we don't unite absolutely but they don't give a damn about the americans here at home that's why we have close to a million people suffering in the street so many people uninsured that don't have health insurance they can't even get a basic checkup people starving malnutrition can't buy houses. I mean, they don't care about us. And we have to understand that as a whole. And what they're doing right now is going too unchecked. we got to let our voices be heard. This is what real citizen journalism is about, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we do this. Go ahead, fam. Um, and fam, so another thing against the ISIS narrative, huh. I think, in terms of it actually being ISIS without, you know, the U.S. being involved, right? Because that's how the U.S. is painting it. Oh, yeah, it was ISIS. We have nothing to do with that. Yeah, that's not the case. So um, the U.S. State Department, as we mentioned earlier on the show, two weeks ago warned about a potential uh, attack of sorts, okay? Mm -hmm. So they said stay from big co concerts, stay from big malls, blah, 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 events, blah, blah, blah. So this video that we're going to watch right now is really sus, Okay, it's really, really sus, and that is a point Suspect. of involving. <laughs> Fam, it's sus. Fam, Suspect. oh, okay. Translating for the boomer, for, for yeah, us. Yeah, I don't know. Us. Just in case we get... Ladies and gentlemen, when Fam says sus, she's saying suspect. <laughs> it's awkward. <laughs> it's weird. Just it wait till I bring the alphas in here. Analyzed. It's suspect, not sus. No cap, Fam. Oh, stop. This is amazeballs. Let's go. All right, Jamie, if you can play that video before and this is I get why more I couldn't cringe. go to Russia. More cringe. Also seen, hopefully you saw our state the State Department, our embassy there, uh, put out a notice to all Americans uh, in Moscow to avoid any large gathering, concerts, obviously shopping malls, anything like that, uh, just for their own safety. They should, uh, they should stay put where they are and stay plugged into the State Department for any additional updates and information. I'm afraid that's really all I have on that. Now, in Ukraine, today Russia launched a massive wave of also seen. Hopefully, you saw our state, state <laughs> That's perfect. Now, in Ukraine, today Russia did da, 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 da. Somehow they got this information like two weeks ago that something was going to happen in Russia. And, and now they, and Maria Zaharova called them out, the foreign ministry spokeswoman. She was like, the U.S. is, uh, and the West's reaction to this is, is very uh, suspicious. She she basically said that out loud. She was like, "This this is weird. They shouldn't be criticizing people too." Because then the U.S. came in and started criticizing Russia as well. 
uh, and saying, you know, blah, 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 it's not safe. And using this to say, look how dangerous Russia is. It's not, Mo especially Mo Moscow is the safest city I have ever been in. I will say that again. It is the safest city I have ever been in. Say that As again. a woman, I was Moscow walking around. The safest city. <laughs> I was walking around by myself at three o'clock in the morning because it was summer and the sun was up already. And I was, I had sound karaoke with one of my friends very late and the sun was already up and it was just gorgeous. And I just I was waiting, walking. And then I uh, was waiting for the taxi and it was fine. It was normal. It was like, it, it's just so clean, so pristine. It's just so safe, especially in, like Moscow, Moscow itself. And to see this, it really is just wow. Like, and, and to see the State Department specifically say, didn't he say concert venues? Mm -hmm. He did. He did. He did. I, and, I mean, I'm just flabbergasted why more, like more people aren't, hello? Hello? Yeah. How did they know? How did they know this? And well, fam. I was going to analyze it, but The Bachelor's coming on, and there's new things coming on, and I heard they're, they're redoing uh, Willy Wonka. Sam, it's not The Bachelor anymore. It's on. Love is Blind. And, okay? you know, like, we got the Grammys and this and Sam, that. Love is Blind. You need to watch that show, okay? Fam, Love I'm not is blind. watching any of those shows. Season you, you 6, Fam, no cap. you three, four episodes of The Sopranos. You admit I've it watched has more episodes. It's a masterpiece, Fam. First of all. I show you Sopranos videos so you can cope and relate to things in real life. All the answers Sam, are in the Sopranos. Okay, is love blind? That is the question you have to ask yourself. No, it's not. Love <laughs> is not blind. It's definitely I not blind see. for you. I'll give you that. Much. Absolutely not. I'm going to use all my senses: see, taste, smell, the whole nine yards. Listen, first off, Jamie, you're going to be fired again. This is the second time I'm firing Jamie in as many days. The other day, he said all the people in New Jersey should own the New York Jets. It's the people of New York. Screw off. Second, uh, no, he's he right about that. Good job. The U.S. Dude. is sus, so you can eat a bag the of US Richard, Jamie. Now, not only Mr. Sullivan, who, fam, this guy, I can't stand uh, John Kirby, <sighs> yeah. Jake Sullivan. Kirby, right, with the fake tears, acting like, oh, my God, what happened to Israel? It's a shame. And meanwhile, we continue to fund them the weapons, right? I yeah. try to use this analogy of saying that you're going to tell a person who beats his wife is he's awful for doing so, but you're going to hand them a brand new belt every single time that's bigger and thicker to beat his wife with. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but something to that magnitude so that you know it is phony because they say these things in one hand, but they can continue to provide the weapons. The weapons that are used to kill the Palestinians in Gaza come from the United States. So it's just empty words. It's broken promises. It means nada, zip, zilch. They don't care about lying. They're going to lie. Uh, and hearing people like Randy Rhodes, right? There's free speech TV that has like people like David Pakman, Tom Hartman, Randy Rhodes, who've just become the the shit libs of tomorrow, of today now, because they're now they've completely graduated. They are the shit libs today to act like the United States, the Democrats care about the people in Gaza, that Joe Biden cares is just ridiculous. They keep pounding this whole thing where it shows Jared Cushman. Is that his name? Uh, Kushner. Kushner. Thank you. I said Cushman. I'm thinking about Kush. Uh, Jared Kushner talking about, oh, there can be beach property, right? <laughs> yeah. Inside Gaza. And they're using that as a way of saying, oh, look, you know, Biden and the Democrats care about a ceasefire. However, they're not talking shit about Russia. Every single Democrat is even Barbara Lee, who said the, it was the only one to vote against the AUMF, is for bombing civilians in the Donbass, is for this type of actions. So it's just, once again, empty words. We have a completely captured Congress. We have a completely captured system. They don't give a damn about us. They're not stopping. They're not slowing down. And they're not going to continue to slow down. So we have John Kirby over here telling us, tipping his hat once again. In poker, I would say, all right, this guy just, it's a tell. A tell, fam. A T-E-L-L. -L. They, they signaled what they have. So now I know what they're holding. Well, Victoria, super sus, <laughs> some would say, stop it. J j put it down, Jamie. S Victoria Noodleman, before she resigned. That's a good word. Stop. It's not sus. It's no, suspect. Yeah, fam. fam, Victoria Newland a couple weeks ago, listen to her speech here at the very end. Uh, our good friend Wyatt Reed put this up here. And she says there's going to be some surprises. This is a surprise. My Lord, if, if there is karma, such thing as a karma, there is a hot seat in hell for these people. 
Mr. Putin's going to get some get nice surprises on the battlefield and that Ukraine will make some very strong success this year. Uh, Mr. Putin. Fam? Well, she did say on the battlefield, but I guess they could consider civilians the battlefield at this point. That is sus. Oh, we won. That Chat, is sus. We won. Team that sus won. That is sus, right? Look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm hip, <laughs> y'all. Um, but that, that is suspect, really. I, I, and we have all these signs out there. I mean, like I said, I was going to go uh. to Russia, and I got the okay, but then all of a sudden they said, the foreign ministry is halting all the visas. Something's going on. We didn't get a, Damn, an answer on why, but there you go. Worry. And all of a sudden now this happens. You'll, you'll get, you'll get here. You know, Russia has been appealing to, it's becoming the Paris of, uh, that of this of time, really. A lot of people are coming in They're They're saying, Hey, like, this is, this is so cool. There's so many yeah, people here the pizza, that are like-minded. The fam. The pizza here is bomb.com. There is a certain pizza place I have to take you. It is actually so bomb. Good. It's bussin'. It's bussin', fam. The pizza no is bussin'. No cap. Bussin'. Chat, explain to pasta what bussin' is. My sister, actually, I think she was trying to explain it to you one day, but. 